Lorraine Mason is the author of six books, a freelance project designer, and an editor whose work can be found in print, online, and on television. She delights in threading her sewing machine and experimenting with newfound fabric-like surfaces. She says if it fits between her presser foot and the feed dog, you never know what you'll find it sewn into. I'm delighted to welcome Lorraine Mason. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, everybody. It is so good to be here. As I mentioned on the chat line, it is sunny, and I just feel great. All right, I hope you've been saving those pet food bags, and I'm talking any kind of pet food, whether you have a bird, an iguana, a, a um, fish. Whatever you've got, it would be great to see what we can do with it. Tiffany's got a photo of a, of a bag that I made up of dog food, and I use it as a grocery tote. I mean, maybe she can pop that up there. When I was getting ready to um, present this craft, I started thinking about, there we are, and that's my daughter's dog, Izzy, who just got back from Montana. She's been, My daughter's a nurse, and she was on an Indian reserve in Montana, and she took Izzy along for company. Um, this dog food bag is part of Izzy's food, and I made a grocery tote out of it, and actually one of my daughters carries it around. Thanks, Tiff. I was thinking about how would I show how to make this dog food bag, and what would be the easiest way to, or grocery tote, I guess I'm doing, uh, what would be the easiest way to show you how to do it. So I decided probably to do it in a miniature version would be a little easier because our screen is quite small. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's say you've got that pet food bag, and the, the only qualifications it has to have is that it has to be kind of sturdy. Uh, so if it's got like a plasticky type lining, that's great. If it's got a Ziploc top, that's great, whatever. But let's say you've got that bag, and you're going to make your grocery tote or lunch bag or whatever it is that you want to do um, according to the bag that you've got, the size that you've got. So don't be worried about the sizes that I'm using. I will put the basic instructions on the uh, website, on my website, uh, Tiffany will put the address up there and you can download it from there. So let's get started. We've got our dog food bag or pet food bag. What you want to do is get out a rotary cutter and a ruler, or if you don't have these, you could just use a, uh, like a yardstick and a pair of scissors and a pen and mark it off. And what you want to do is you want to cut, cut the top of the bag off and cut the bottom of the bag off. Then turn the bag inside out. And all I do is I use a cleaner such as Windex or something like that, and it can be no name, and I spray it down really good with paper towel, and I wipe it down, and then I let it dry. And that's getting all the little crumbs out, and I've had no problem with smell after that. Uh, I see somebody wrote in that you can do baking soda, you could do vinegar, anything like that is uh, not a problem. And I honestly can say that um, I used it for groceries. My daughter does. Um, and I did before I gave the bag to her. So we've got the bag all cleaned up, and we've got the top of the bag cut off, and we've got the bottom of the bag cut off. But the bag is still like a tube, okay? We've not opened it up. And you'll notice on my samples that I did have to put a seam in because I am doing a much smaller sample than, than a full uh, dog food bag. So just don't pay any attention to that seam. All right, so then I've got that bag. Now it's turned inside out, so here's the brown lining. Can you see that? And inside is the front of the bag. And that's the seam I was talking about that you're not going to have because your bag's already going to be straight across. Then what you want to do is fit your sewing machine with a size 14 or larger needle. Um, and just a, a regular sewing machine needle, regular thread, don't worry about it. I did lengthen my stitch slightly because you don't want the holes to pierce too close or it could tear, actually. So I lengthened mine to about a three and a half uh, length stitch. But you can just kind of experiment with that. And then what I want you to do is sew across the bottom of the bag. And this is with the right sides together. This is the uh, inside of the bag. You're going to sew a seam right across the bottom. You can see that. Okay. Then, once you've got that seam sewn, what we're going to do is we're going to turn it around and we're going to box these corners so we have a nice flat bottom to this bag. And in order to do that, put your hand inside the bag and pull it to a point. Can you see that? And pull that to a point here. And what you want to do is line up this line of stitching with the center side over here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Then take it over to your table. And what I want you to do is use a ruler and a pencil and measure from this stitching, this point, up one and a half inches in this case, but it's going to be different for a larger bag. 
And then, by the magic of television here, I'm going to switch this around. And let's get this on air. And I want you to sew across here. Okay, and I sew just sew the seam straight across there. So you're going to do that to both corners. And then what you've got is, you can turn it right side out, and you've got a nice flat bottom to your bag. If you look inside, I think you can see the corner. Right in here, you can see the corners where I turned the bag inside out. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I want you to take, I'm going to switch back to my other sample here. I want you to take the top edge of the bag, and I want you to turn it towards the inside in this case. Okay, so let's go back to this one here. And you're going to turn that to the inside about bottom to your bag. If you look inside, I think you can see the corner. Right in here, you can see the corners where I turned the bag inside out. All right, the next thing we're going to do is I want you to take, I'm going to switch back to my other sample here. I want you to take the top edge of the bag, and I want you to turn it towards the inside in this case. Okay, so let's go back to this one here. And you're going to turn that to the inside, about one inch, lap it over, and then you're going to sew two rows of stitching. And I just sewed one close up by the edge here and one a little further down. So two rows all the way around. Okay, we're almost finished. You aren't going to believe this. Now we need to add the straps to the bag. And I would use uh, either nylon or some kind of synthetic heavy strapping if you're going to use it for a grocery bag. In this case, I've just used a grow grain ribbon because this bag is pretty tiny. What you want to do is measure your straps. And there again on my website, it's going to have the length of the straps, but you adjust them to whoever you want. I think I probably used about a yard and cut it in half. Then what you're going to do is attach it to the side of the bag wherever you feel it's, it's, hand, it's best for you to hold on to. You don't want to pin through the, the plastic of the dog food bag, so use a piece of tape. You can see here. Oh, this is so tricky here. Yeah, you can see there where you can just use a piece of tape in case. And then I want you to, I'm going to hold this up real close. You can see, I'm probably making you all dizzy here. You can see where I stitched it across. And then what I did on the finished sample is I added a button on top of here. So you're going to sew your two straps to one side, turn your bag over, and sew, two tra uh, sew the strap. It's not two, it's one on this side, sorry, and one on this side. And sew them, and then you've got the strap. Now, I'm going to hold this bag up, and I want you to notice that you don't do what I say, do, do what I really, what you really need to do. Because if you look, it's hard to see, but I made my bag completely upside down, and the dog is upside down. And I was talking to my good friend, and I said, well, what am I going to do with this sample? I don't have another dog food bag handy. Izzy just got here. And I decided, you know what? The bag's upside down. Either you wear it like this, and you can, when people ask you about it, you kind of own it, that, oh, I wanted it to be that way. Or you think of it, maybe it could be a cover for something, and you can turn it the other way, and then the dog's the right way. Personally, I'm going to use it this way, and I'm going to use it. I might even put a plant in here, I'm thinking. Anyway, that's using dog food bags. Um, I've had some questions when I've done these type of things before in that with your sewing machine. You don't want to use your best sewing machine for this. I happen to have an embroidery machine as well. It's fairly expensive, and I would not be sewing plastic or cardboard or paper or things like that on my sewing machine, on my embroidery sewing machine. I have an old heavy-duty machine that sews through everything. It has the metal gears, and it just goes, I swear, it goes through everything. Um, when you have sewing equipment, a lot of people that sew are very touchy about like don't touch my scissors don't touch my sewing machine i'm very careful what i do is i have a rotary cutter i have scissors i have um a sewing machine i have things like that that i use for crafty type sewing if i'm going to be sewing with a, a soft soft cotton or something i'm not going to do this with a heavy duty needle that i've just used to sew a dog food bag um, i just have those kind of things set aside and those are my crafty sewing supplies um, this rotary cutter that i have i certainly can change out the blade and put a new blade in when i want to use it for fabric sewing uh, but that you know don't shy away from things because you think your sewing machine's not going to go through you would be amazed what i